Clarendon Learning explores the 13 original colonies. What is a colony? Well, there are ant colonies, bee colonies, and Malibu Colony Beach. A colony is where a group of people settle in a new place and work together for a common goal. Today, many countries around the world lay claim to colonies and territories. The United States, for example, claim under its jurisdiction the U.S. Virgin Islands, Guam, American Samoa, and Puerto Rico, among many other territories. Today, we are going to consider the 13 original colonies, also known as the British colonies. Before we became the Nifty 50 United States of America, explorers from throughout Europe came to this continent. They came from Spain, they came from France, and they came from the Netherlands. They came to hunt and fish and trap and establish trading posts. It is important to remember that these explorers were not discovering a new land. Native American peoples had already been living here for thousands of years. In the 16th century, England had a problem. The people were hungry and more and more farmland was being converted to pasture land to raise sheep for wool. Wool was more profitable than food. The London Company in England and other groups with some financial support from the King of England began to immigrate to North America. They came for different reasons. They came to grow crops for food and trade, to hunt and trap animals for food and trade. The new settlers wanted to become wealthy. They wanted to find gold and precious minerals and iron ore and harvest timber for shipbuilding and develop their economic opportunities. They also came to worship God according to the dictates of their own conscience without interference from the King of England or other powerful religions in England. England claimed ownership of the Atlantic coast of North America, but the Dutch also claimed lands as well as immigrants from Sweden. And of course, many areas were already well settled by the indigenous people of North America. Let's take a brief look at each of these original colonies according to their geographical locations. We begin with the New England colonies, which are Massachusetts, Connecticut, New Hampshire, and Rhode Island. The colonies in this region were not particularly good for farming, but the immigrants grew what they could. Some corn, beans, and squash. The New England area, however, were rich in forests for lumbering and shipbuilding. They were also good for trapping animals for furs. And what kind of animals do you think provided the most valuable fur? Well, beaver. Apparently, beaver hats were a very popular fashion statement, and beaver pelts were an important commodity to be traded to Europe. In 1620, the Mayflower Pilgrims settled in Plymouth, Massachusetts, and labored hard to make a life. They pledged their allegiance to the King of England, but they also wanted to govern themselves in this new land. So they wrote a list of laws and rules they all pledged to live by. This was called the Mayflower Compact, and it is considered the first governing document of Plymouth Colony. You can check out another great video by Clarendon Learning, The Story of the Pilgrims. In 1628, Massachusetts Bay Colony became organized as one of the 13 colonies. Maine, to the north, did not officially become an independent colony, but it was, however, part of the Massachusetts Bay Colony. Massachusetts Colony played a key role during the American Revolution with the Boston Tea Party. On to New Hampshire. In about 1622, Captain John Mason was given a land grant from the Council of New England. New Hampshire was named after the county in England where Captain Mason was raised, which was named Hampshire. Get it? New Hampshire! Fishing and whaling were important here. In addition to meat, whale oil was used for fuel and lamps. The Puritan minister, Reverend Thomas Hooker, who lived in the Massachusetts colony, had a conflict and disagreement with other Puritan leaders. To avoid persecution, Reverend Hooker, along with about a hundred others, left the colony. They settled in the area of Hartford, Connecticut, 
and in about 1636 became a recognized colony. The name Connecticut is a Native American word, which interpreted means along the tidal river. And the Connecticut River is the longest river in the New England region. Shipbuilding became important here, as well as the export of real maple syrup. Rhode Island and Providence Plantations together became a colony in the New World and was established by the Puritan Roger Williams. Roger Williams had been expelled from the Massachusetts colony for his independent, forward-thinking ideas. He believed in liberty of conscience and separation of government and religion. It was important to Roger Williams that the land he settled be purchased from the Native Americans. Let's visit the middle colonies, Delaware, New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania. Delaware was a colony on the west side of the Delaware River Bay and originally was settled by the Swedes and Dutch until eventually becoming an English colony in 1664 and was also at one time governed as part of Pennsylvania. Originally settled by the Dutch, the colony of New Netherland came under control of England in 1664 at the surrender of Fort Amsterdam, located on what is now the island of Manhattan. James, the Duke of York, sent four English warships into the harbor, and the Dutch gave up the region without a fight. The colony was renamed Province of New York. A portion of the colony was deeded to two principal proprietors, George Carteret and Lord Berkeley of Stratton, and they renamed their colony New Jersey. Many of the Dutch settlers were permitted to remain and continue their businesses, and the proprietors worked to attract settlers by establishing a representative government and allowing freedom of religion. These colonies were great for farming and considered the breadbasket, since fields of wheat could be harvested and ground into flour and shipped to England. These colonies also provided coal and iron ore. King Charles gave a large land grant to William Penn, a Quaker, and named the province Penn's Woods. In Latin, it became Pennsylvania. It was a place where other Quakers could come and work and live without persecution. And since the king owed William's father a lot of money, William received a big chunk of land. It was important to William Penn that the Native Americans be treated with respect and compensated fairly. Hang in there, kids. We're just about finished. Let's take a break and take a look at this picture of the Liberty Bell. It's in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We now come to the Southern Colonies, Virginia, North and South Carolina, Maryland, and Georgia. Can you remember the reasons why England wanted to colonize North America? A couple of them were to grow food, and another to improve the economy of England and the settlers. Well, the climate and the soil in the southern colonies were great for growing tobacco. Yep, that's not food. But it was a cash crop, and a lot of money was made on the export of that stuff. At the time, they didn't know it was bad for you. The farms of the southern colonies were successful growing tobacco, rice, timber, and cotton. Slave labor and indentured servants were used to work these large plantations. The weather was great, but the downside was these colonies were a breeding ground for malaria and other disease. So there is something to be said for the cold winters of the north. Growth and development continued with the original colonies, and eventually the people began to share their identity as Americans. The overreach of Great Britain and the burden of taxation became a catalyst that would cause the colonies to revolt and rebel. Now would be a good time to check out the activity pages in the Clarendon Learning Lesson Plan on the original colonies. And check out the Clarendon Learning presentation on the Declaration of Independence. Thanks for following Clarendon Learning. Be sure to subscribe. If you're looking for more teaching resources, check us out at clarendonlearning.org.